and welcome to a new part of the tutorial series. I'm sorry I haven't made a video in so long, I was sick. Um, so Apple released a new version of Xcode, Xcode 5, and they changed some stuff here. Well, it's mostly good, but there's one downside. There in the base SDK, in the base SDK setting, there is no current OS X function, so they removed that, I don't know why. So maybe I, I'm doing something wrong, or I'm not aware of something, but for now, uh, if you switched to Xcode 5, so make sure to set this SDK to, I guess you can choose which one, I'll, no, I'll just do latest OS X for now. And, and only if you switch to Xcode 5, um, go to search pants, in the header search pack, you have to add or include file, which if you follow it, the video on installing Jello W3 should be should be uh, should be user local uh, include. So user slash local slash include. And the library search pad, so for library itself, slash user slash local slash colon slash include. And slash lib, sorry. So local slash lib. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I recommend you install the command line tools. And uh, also set this in uh, your simple FPS project. So you are doing this in the target setting, but also do this in the project setting. So add these two. So yeah. So to the search pads, add those two values. And uh, then, now if you want to add the library to our project, we have to do add other, and then manually uh, uh, search the library, which is kind of annoying. But no problem, okay, so now let's continue with our game. Um, and, let's, and let's create the two shader files. And we we'll create a simple, a simple color shaker. So simply uh, add an empty file and name it color shader. And there are multiple extensions for shader files, but I'll use VS for the vertex shader. And note there are two shader, and there are two files. And I'll use so again same name. Color shader, but this time with FS for fragment shader. Like this. Okay, now let's create our. So in your vertex shader, um, I'll, so, so yeah, let's first create a very simple one. So simply type attribute, um, attribute vector 3. And I like to prefix attributes with an A and simply name this position vertex. And I'll explain everything in just a minute. I'll first type everything out and then do the main method. So every shader has a main method, main uh, with no arguments. Okay, so now type GL underscore position with a capital P position equals jail underscore model capital view with the capital so jail model view then projection also with the capital and matrix also with the capital and this multiplied by our a position vertex attribute now what all of this basically means um, is that okay so Basically, we define an attribute uh, variable, which is a vector tree. So a vector is simply a, a structure tree with three components, so three floats in this case. So for our so for our, our position coordinates, now a vertex shader um, runs once for every vertex in our mesh. So I use this simple program to illustrate. Um, so, it's enough. Okay, so um, say we have um, 
a simple triangle. Um, yeah, so, so we have a simple triangle with three vertices, so like this, and it's 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 very ugly. And the vertex shader will run once for every three vertex, so we will pass so three coordinates, and our shader there will will run one time for every coordinate. So our attribute it will pass, so it will run. So every time it runs, our attribute, so so our a position vertex variable, will have a different value. So so the value of the vertex it is currently running for. Okay. So that's an attribute. Um, then, so I quickly read on the extension to VSH and FSH. It's actually that. That's well, well. I think that's the most common one. I'm not sure, but yeah, use that please. Um, then, back to our shader. So then, what this basically means this line. Um, so here we set the position for the vertex, but first we have to transform that position uh, by the GL model view projection matrix, which is kind of deprecated. Well, this is a deprecated way to do it, but it but it's, it's very simple, so we'll use this. And what this will do, it will take this coordinate system. So the coordinate system, our variable is using, and transform that coordinate system to the coordinate system OpenGL is using. So that's a simple explanation for this line. Um, and by the way, this is the most simple shader you can create. This is like the most basic one you can do. Okay. Um, then let's move on to our fragment shader. And there we'll have something called a uniform vector 4. And you can and and prefix it with a U and color. And again, void main. So every shader, so the U fragment and the vertex has a main function. It can have multiple functions, but main is the minimum. Well, you need to have a main function, like in C. Um, and main simply do gl underscore frag color equals and simply do u color and what no basically a uniform is a variable wait first so if, so the fragment shader here will run once for every pixel of our uh, our triangle so our so our triangle may have I don't know how many maybe a thousand pixels or really more than that yeah Way more than thousand pixels, and and it will basically set a color to those uh, to those pixels. It's that simple. There's not much to it. Um, yeah. So it sets the color to the pixels of the mesh. So of the. So yeah, of our thing we are currently drawing, and. Um, yeah, and the uniform, it's basically like a constant attribute. So the attribute will change for every new attribute. Yeah, but but uniforms will stay the same for every call to the shader. So for every so every time we draw uh, something, the uniform value will stay constant. Uh, so yeah, so that way all of the pixels will have the same color Which is which is what you want basically. Okay, and this is basically the most simple fragment shader and vertex shader you can create Okay, now um, uh, uh, Well, actually, let's create something Okay, one more thing create a new class and you can name this class C++ and name this class Shader Interface and 
this will basically be a kind of a data structure to access our shader from a dinner code. And um, yeah, shader interface. Uh, private, public. Okay, so and you can include um, our shader, our shader loader into this. So um, yeah, include shader loader dot h, and and let's create our private. Um, Mm -hmm. So you can create uh, the gl unsigned int, unsigned int, and you can simply name this program handle. Oh yeah, so program handle. Oh, or actually, no, don't do that. Simply create your shader loader and shader like this and then um, let's so now create two gl ins the first one will be a position vertex so it's basically this will be a, a, a reference to the variable in our shader and so like an id for that variable and one more gl and u color shader and this is the id for the for the for our uniform color shader variable and make this a pointer um then in the public let's create some setters um Mm. So, um, yeah, okay, so let's, yeah, basically, let's, no, no setters, only get her, so simply do gl, first do gl unsigned int and yeah. Yeah, glu int and do under and do get program handle. Then um, gl int uh, get a position vertex. Maybe do the underscore like this. Um, a position vertex and I always get this wrong. And then gl int again get underscore u color share. I like to keep the name of the variable and the ID in this game in a, in this case the same because that way it's much clearer what we're accessing. And uh, yeah, and also let's define our our, our constructor. So uh, yeah, share interface interface and our destructor shader interface then our implementation so switch to the LCDB file and I'll simply copy this mm -hmm. and I'll quickly type all of this out and voila and then in your get program handle simply do return return and then do shader shader get program handle like this and then here simply do return and make sure it's with an underscore I, I always forget underscore so return underscore a position vertex and return underscore u color shader and in our constructors 
Now simply do this. So first of all, shader equals new. And we forgot to argue to our um, interface by the way. Simply do char pointer and simply do then vs and char pointer fs, I guess. Uh -huh. Then, oh, and also add uh, the underscores to the variables here, if you didn't. And then simply do, again, char pointer to uh, ps and char pointer to the fs. And then simply do new share the lo uh, loader with vs and fs. Okay. And then we can do this. We can do underscore a position vertex equals and then gl get at rep location um, shader get program handle and then we give the name as a string of our uh, of our attribute so a position vertex and the same goes for our uniform so underscore u color sh uh, sorry I need to do color shade. What the hell? Uh, quickly rename this to simply U color. I then name it color shader. Great. So yeah. So please rename everything to U color. That's kind of weird. Okay, no problem. Okay. So U color equals equals gel get uniform location so this time uniform but uh, not not the uh, address location and uh, u color I name it u color in the shader also um, yes it's u color here okay u color and what these lines will do it will simply give an ID to these um, to these variables, and if the variable doesn't exist in the shader, this will return minus one. Okay, and that's basically it. And also in our destructor, let's quickly delete um, delete our uh, our shader like this. And this is a very simple shader interface. So, okay. And this was everything for today. Um, next video we will. Um, we, well, we should still. Let's see. We should do some more work on our interface. Well, no, our interface is basically done for now. Um, we still need some more stuff in our vertex buffer and our in our uh, render system. And yeah, and I think maybe in two videos we. We'll actually get something on screen. So, yeah. Okay. So, see ya. It's too nice. Bye.